I'm going to be speaking on, oh snap, I got so many books up here. Faith will position you. Faith will position you. Let's say that again. Faith will position you. Now, the reason I chose this topic is because I was reading, and I'm coming out of Daniel, the third chapter. Third chapter, verses 12 through 30. But I was reading Daniel, and it was showing how Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego had so much faith, so much faith in the God that they served. And how it was saying that these three biblical young men were positioned because of their faith. They had rank because they showed faith. They showed the, the, the let me give a definition of faith in Webster's term. The definition of faith. This is what they show. Complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And then they also show the biblical definition of faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This is what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego showed us, that faith will position you. It will position you to work too. Everyone will, that has tried to misuse you or mislead you or guide you in the wrong way or talk about you, they will be at your footstool. They will be catering to you. But it's all because of the faith that you have and what the faith you have in. And what it is you have faith in. Now, um, let's let's go to, I'm a, we're going to break it down a little bit of what I'm trying to show you on faith will position you. Um, now, the, 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 uh, the definition of position is a particular way in which someone or something is placed or arranged. So they were placed in a uh, uh, in a area or arranged to be served after they show the faith that they have. So that's what I was saying in this Daniel the third chapter that as long as you keep the faith, don't let nothing, no one distract you. Anything can hurt this body, but they can't hurt the counsel that God has given you. They cannot touch that. It's like MC Hammer song. Who remember that Hammer song? Can't touch this. That's how it is. The 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 faith that would lies in you, the counseling of the holy or the good energy or whatever you want to call it, when you withhold that, nothing can touch it or take it away. Because it's the mental state. The mental frame is what you capture. You capture something that is mental instead of physical. When you capture something that is physical, it is easy to take away. But when you capture something that is mental, you can never take it away because it's stored into a memory brain. In your brain. Can you pass me that water over there? By the chair. But yes. Now, now, you, now, I'm, I broke it down. God gave me these good revelations to show you guys that faith will position you. It will. Now, let's go into Daniel. We're gonna get into Daniel. I know y'all anxious to read what 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 happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's what this story of the third chapter in Daniel was speaking on. These three Hebrew brothers. These brothers that were of the Holy One. That wouldn't serve the gods that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had, had put up. So this story is about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And who is it about? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Say it. Shadrach, Meshach. In the Bendigo, said Monty, Shadrach, Meshach, in the Bendigo. But let, 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 let me get a sip of this water. Then we're going to go to Daniel, the third chapter, and we're going to start at the 12th verse. But yes, Shadrach, Meshach, in the Bendigo. Daniel, the third chapter, in the 12th verse. It says, now it says, but there, affairs of province of Babylon 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you. This is someone, a servant of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, excuse me, Nebuchadnezzar, however you say that word, that name. But these are servants of Nebuchadnezzar the king. Telling him, hey, we got a group of men that is not worshiping these idol gods that you have made. And you said when the trumpet and these instruments play, they shall bow. They shall hit their knee. But these three, it's something about these three. They said they will not bow and will not obey the gods that you have put in front of them. So let's keep going. It says, it says, uh, 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 uh. Where I'm at, 12. Uh, I haven't got all the way in my path. I'm so excited about this passage. But there are some Jews. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 12. It says, it says, but there are some Jews who have set over the affair of province of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and the Benigo, who pay no attention to you. Nebuchadnezzar, that's what he said. Your majesty. They pay no attention to you. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of God of gold you have set up. For, have set up. It says, furious. This is uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Furious with rage. Nebuchadnezzar. Summon Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When it says summon, that means come here now. I need to see you. I want to see what is on your mind. What makes you not want to. Praise the gods that I have placed in front of you. I am king. I tell you what to do. I run this land. So he was saying, and he said, he said, uh, your majesty. And then he said, Nebuchadnezzar, he said, furious with rage. Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true? He says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is this true? That you do not serve my gods? So you don't serve the gods that I have created, huh? So now you want me, what do you want me to do with you? This is, I'm just, my perception of the story. And so, and then it said, it said, is it true you don't serve? Shadrach and Meshach, that you do not serve my gods or worship. The image of gold I have set up. Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, he tell them, when you hear, he said, I, this is the king talking to him. He said, I run this. When you hear the sound of these horns, flute, zia, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are not, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. He said, I'm going to set a fire. Y'all know like the, y'all know what a furnace is? Y'all know that thing at Grandma and Granddaddy house in the living room where the, the heater is? That's a furnace. And all a furnace do is just burn wood or catch fire. It just stay lit all day because that's what it's for, to keep heat. So he said... I'm a, I'm a, I'm a immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hands? He said, oh, you think y'all think y'all bad. Huh? These some bad little boys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They talking about the guy that these people don't even know. I don't even know nothing about this guy. We're going to see if they God is really what they talking about. So, look, look. And then he said, if you do not, I will guarantee you, you will see this fire. You will see, you will burn. When this is what happens, look, look, they was had furnaces like when they cremate, cremate people, I can imagine, that, that they threw them in. Because you can, when you burn a body, it turns to ashes. Think about cremation. If you burn a body, it melts into ashes so bad. But these three boys, these three boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he said, and then, then he said, I, I want you. I, I dare you. I'm going to guarantee you this. I dare you to not fall when these horns get to going off. I dare you 
to not praise when I tell you to. I de- this is a king of the land. But we talking about a king of all. A king of kings. A God of good energy. A God who can rescue you from anything as long as you keep that faith. Then it said in 16, it said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. He said, they was basically saying like, I don't want no fault, cuz. Cuz, we don't want no problem. All the problems that, that you may want, we don't want those, but we going to show you what's real. I ain't trying to step on your toes, homeboy. We know you king around here. That's what they would say. We said, we know you a king around here. We know you running things. But let me tell you who runs my life. You may run this kingdom in this community. But I'm going to give you an example of who's running my character, my mind, and my thoughts. So they went on. He said, King Nabotanazer, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Verse 17, it says, if we are thrown in a blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And if he will deliver us from your majesty hand, and he will, it's the, let me take that back. He said, he will be able to deliver us and he will deliver us. That's the fact that they show. He said, look. No matter what you can do to this body, you cannot take my soul. The faith that I have is much bigger than what you are placing in front of me. Tell him. He said, now you can throw me in there, but I guarantee you this. My God will. He said, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But in 18 it says, but if we, but I said, but if, it said, but even if he does not, check this out. They said, but even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Hold on, they're performing faith as they continue to show the king that this is wrong. God said, there should be no gods before me. He said, y'all done set up all these gods, worshiping these idols, this gold, this money, this land. When I want to worship what made the thought to create those gods that you made. My God gave you thought. I'm going to show you everything that you are trying to do. My God does better. Plus. You can't touch what he can do. You're not my God, and they're not my God, and you really ain't my king. I'm just here to help show you and also to position me from the faith that I have in the God that I serve. Hmm. And it goes on. It says, Woo! in 19, verse 19, it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar, he was furious. With Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And his attitude towards them changed. He was like, whoa, hold up, hold up, play. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Ain't nobody around here ever disrespect me. Hold on. These some, these some real gangsters. Now, hold on. Let's listen. Hold on, servants, priests, all y'all. Let's listen to what they got. They done made me think about some things. So, okay, he made them furious. He was mad. Right? You know what I'm saying? Right. Y'all done made me change. I'm done did it. Disrespect me in front of all of my people. This is my kingdom. I run this. I made these guys. I made this castle. I made everything according to the land that's over here. You're all on. I made. That's what Nebuchadnezzar's perception is saying. He said, Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. His attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. He said, these people are going to disrespect. Y'all think y'all tough, huh? Huh? You little three amigos, I think y'all tough, huh? We're going to make it seven times hotter than it normally be. We're going to make sure these, these gangsters ain't going to, this message ain't going to go further than where we at. 
Because if the land know that that they God is better than what I had, then they gonna start by my except seven times than what it normally be. And we're gonna make sure that these boys don't come up out this furnace. But that thing that these boys had in their God, he said, the God I serve will. He said, he's able to deliver us from your hand, your majesty, and he will. That's the faith. He said, he will. He said, I, basically, he said, this is some regular old man that's worshiping God going against this king. And then back in the day, if you were king, you got access to anything of the land. You can kill the staff of your finger. So they took a chance and faith in the in the God that they serve. And they was going against somebody that had power of the land. But God said, I'm the power of heaven and earth. The God they serve. <coughs> he ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. Verse 20. And commanded some of the strongest soldiers in the army. To tie up Sharat, Meshach, and Abednego. And threw them in the blazing furnace. So now they're in the furnace. All because of the faith that they had. They believed in what God said. Do He said, every knee should bow. He said, I am the God of all gods. You should not put nobody before me. And as long as you worship me, I will deliver you from these things of this world. And they showing it. They said, well, come on, where we gonna go? They, they didn't fight, they didn't say here where they try to fight it, when the soldiers tied them up, they said, well, let's go, let's do it, because the faith that I have is stronger than what you can do to me. Now, and it said, it commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw him into a blazing furnace. Verse 21. So these men were wearing their robes. So look, look. They had on all things that were catch fire. They were wearing their robes, the 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 torsors, the turbans, and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. All of these things was thrown into the furnace. But check this out: the faith that they had. It said the king commanded. The king's command was so urgent, and the furnace so hot. That the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Sharak, Meshach, and Abednego. So the flames were so high it burned the people that took them there. But it still didn't say that they caught fire, did it? Still didn't say that these boys was touched. Now it said, it says, then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet. He said, what the heck? Now I know. It just burned up my soldiers. We ain't worried about them guys. But I still see it in that. They still in there. He said, hold up. Now to now to jump to his feet in amazement and ask his advisors, were there three men that were tied up and thrown into that fire? In that fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four. There are four men walking around in that fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looks like a son of the gods. He said, I know for sure that they should have burnt up. I gave the powerful and strongest, the biggest, the ones I know that can tie them up, make sure they burn where they can't get out the fire. And then once they got to the fire, the people I asked to put them in there, they burnt up, but they still ain't touched. He said, what in the world is going on here? I have never seen this such thing. Having nobody ever showed me the faith. And then it goes on. He said, he said these boys was in there. So I see three, four people, four. And they just walking around in this fire. They just keep it. They got, they, they, I, this is what I can imagine what they were doing. And singing praises to God in that fire and not even touch. But listen to what it said. It said they had on everything that could catch fire. Cloth catch fire and faster than skin. Cloth catch fire faster than skin. They had on so much stuff, but they still didn't get burnt. Check. It says, 25, he said, he said, look, I see four men 
walk around in that fire. Unbound. Unbound means they came loose. They weren't tied up. They weren't, they weren't strangled trying to get out of nothing. Then it says, and unharmed. Then he said, hold up. Who that other dude over there, cuz? Why I look like cuz from the set? He said, <laughs> he said, it looks like a son of the gods. Then he said, <clears throat> Nabucodonosor, verse 26. Then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shalrat, Meshach, and the Billy Goat, sons of the Most High, come out, come here. Look what it did. That's why your walk is important all the time. Because the people may not be able to read a book. They see this king who ruled land, who ruled where they were at, who had way more than what they can have and are offered on this land. But they had something better. They had God, the faith. And then it said, he seen that they praised the most high God. He said, I made these gods that I thought can bring me power, but you got the God that will give you power. And he said, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they came out the fire. They said, what's up, girl? You, I did not tell you. You don't believe me? He said, I sure, I, I'm trying to tell you, the God I serve, my faith is too strong to let you try to lead me down the path of destruction. I'm trying to be in position so I can have eternal life. That's what faith do. It positions you to get ready for eternal life. Oh, faith will position you was the topic of this. The definition of faith, complete trust. This is Webster's definition. Complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Let's give the biblical definition. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith will position you. Now, he said, I see that y'all serve this most high God. This king said, hey, these people here, they special. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego special. So let's see what else he said. He said, come out, come here. So they came out the fire, verse 27. And the strap, the 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 sureps, the satraps, prefects, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. Everybody seen this. They seen how them boys walked in that fire. The whole village seen how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walked in this fire, and they came out untouched. They seen it because of the faith that they had. But watch how I position them. This is what brought me to this topic. Faith, excuse me. Faith will position you. It said, it, it said, they all saw them crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor the hair of their heads. Woo! Sign. It said, the head sign, seen. It says, their robes were not scorched. The robe, the clothes they had on didn't even catch fire. Their robes were not scorched. And there was no smell of fire on them. You can't even touch fire because you don't have the faith. You can't even put a, take a lighter. I got this in my pocket just for specific things. You can't even touch a lighter like this without it burning. This was just to show y'all an example. But I'm going to show you something. Keep going. Look, it says, it says in 28. Wait, wait, yeah, yeah, it says it's 28. Then Nabuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. This is only if you got the faith. God will send his angels to protect you. He says, they trusted in him and de defied the king's command where the, and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. 
Look what it say. Look, all because of the faith in the God that they serve. Watch this. Verse 29. It says, therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and the Billy go be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble. And for no other God can say in this way, the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into province of Babylon, province of Babylon. So those of you just tuning in or vibing in, I was speaking on faith will position you. I came from Daniel, the third chapter, verses 12 through 30, where it was talking about how uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, faith positioned them to be where they needed to be. And also, it's positioning them. It made it to where they can be positioned and ready for their eternal life. But your faith has to be strong in what you are believing in or standing on. And you must not let nothing knock you off your rocker. If anything comes along, don't let it scare you, deter you, or defer you from what God wants you to do. And I believe their mission in chapter 3 was to show the king that there is a God because God was getting sick and tired of Nebuchadnezzar giving these people idol gods to worship. So he said, I'm going to send some of my people that the bold ones. He said, I'm going to send the bold ones because in order to go up against the king of a land, you got to be bold because this king can have you killed in the snap of a finger. So, when they did that, they showed that they were getting ready to be in position. Again, it showed where the king promoted them. It told it where the king promoted them. Faith will position you. Position a particular way in which someone or something is placed or arranged. So, we got to, we have to. Keep that faith because it's trying to position you where you can receive eternal life. And not only that, it will position you to where you will be healthy, wealthy, and successful, uh, progressing, and also be prosperous here on earth. But you got to have that faith. Now let's go to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, and then I'm going to wrap it up. Wrap it up, you know what I'm saying? Because I believe... <coughs> If you haven't noticed, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all, that most of my, my messages are teaching is about faith because that's what we need to learn about. I don't, I really don't care about speaking about giving and all these other things because if you do not have your mind together, you will not know the real meaning of giving or the real meaning behind giving. You will not know the real meaning of standing or, or, or helping others to to stand with you. So you got to get your faith together. But go to 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter in the 20th verse. 2 Chronicles 20 and 20. And it says, Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. So that's what happened when it came to these Shadrach, Meshach, and the Benigo. They faith. Their faith in the God and in the other prophets that came before him that before them that explained about the good energy or Holy Spirit that can capture you. They believed what the prophets were saying about this good God and how it will lead you. So they stood firm because of the people that were before them. They were real. And when you are real and according to the spirit, it affects people. It shows people just like Shadrach and the Meshach and the Benigo did when he, they showed the king a real God. We want to be effective instead of defective and we want to be half. <laughs> And I say it all the time, we don't want to be infected. These infections, boy, it's bad. I'm telling you. But yeah, I'm going to close it out right there. The, again, my topic was faith will position you. I came from Daniel, the third chapter, verses 12 through 30. And it talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm going to go ahead and pray us out again. I want y'all to read over that. 
And y'all see how what's what y'all see. Get what God wants y'all to get out of that. And again, faith will position you. Excuse me. It will position you. And condition you and have you ready for elevation. What is elevation? Mental elevation. Not nothing that these this man-made elevation. Oh man, I'm gonna promote Johnny because he came to church in this nice suit. We gonna make him a deacon. No, we gonna we gonna make it to where to you are mentally elevated. To where to you are not just looking ready for you are ready for. But yes, I would like to thank y'all for bobbing into uh, one worship, one praise discipleship center where we only teach the Bible. And I'm gonna pray us out. Also, if you guys would like to donate, our cash app is up there. All donations go towards our community events. We got a lot of community events coming up next month with St. Jude Memorial Family Worship Center. Shout out to Pastor and First Lady Collins and the St. Jude family. And I also want everybody to, uh, to keep in prayer. My mom and dad, Rock of Praise Ministry, shout out to y'all. We love y'all. And uh, But like I said, if y'all would like to donate, that would be great. We have a school supply drive that we are doing right now. As we speak, we have flyers going around. We're trying to get all the supplies that we can so we can help these children. And we're going to pass them out on the first Sunday in September. What? What? The first Sunday in September. No. But yeah, we're going to pass them out on the first Sunday in September. And we want to be able to help all that we are eligible to help. And if it's about us coming together, right? then we need to come together to help those that need help. But thank y'all. Love y'all. I'm going to pray us out. And then I would love for you guys. if you